right. Uh, the, um, we, we're talking about toys, but uh, we're talking about so many things during three days. And one very interesting topic is this about personal weather station. And the next company, Netatmo, they just won, I think, three awards at CES. So that, that, that's amazing. And they produce basically a personal weather station where you can understand the quality of your air inside, I don't know how much CO2 you have inside your, your house, and in this way you try to adapt. And we have here the founder and CEO, Fred Potter. A big round of applause, thanks. Hi, thank Welcome. you, Marco. Yeah, I just leave you the stage. J just tell me, you will get the prize uh, at the next CES, uh, I was right? Yeah, three prizes three in prize. three categories. All right, thank you so much, Fred You're Potter. welcome. Hi, hi, Low Web. Uh, my name is Frederick Potter. I've been uh, connecting things to the internet over the last uh, 20 years, and I'm here to talk about my new project, uh, which is Netatmo. What I'm here today to, to talk, to discuss, is some very important things. Because some things do actually really matter, and some don't. This is Ted. Ted actually matters to me. It's my son, Teddy Bear. It's the most important thing in his life, and because of that, it's also the most important thing in my life. Everywhere my son goes, he needs to take Ted with him. So it means I have to take Ted everywhere that I go. Eventually, as we grow up, we understand that we don't need Teddy Bear. But, I mean, do we? There is something we cannot go anywhere without. There is something which is extremely important in our everyday life, and this is our smartphone. Can you leave the web without your smartphone? Could you have come this morning without your smartphone? So if something is important, it has to be in your smartphone. And if something is not important, then it is not in your smartphone. So let me stop here for a few seconds, because this is what the Internet of Things is about. It's about taking all the important things in your physical, everyday life and to put them into your phone. As an industry, we've been doing that for the last 10 years. It started with your phones and then your, your, your phone calls and then your contacts and your agenda, and at some point your music, your video, your photos, your friendship, your social relationship, at some point your, your health and your whole social life is getting into your iPhone. And maybe tomorrow also banking and paying, it means all your life is getting into your smartphone. We think that weather and environment matter. It matters collectively because we all know we need to take care of our environment. And it also matters individually because in our everyday life, to plan our activities or to enhance our comfort, we rely on the weather and on the environment. The environment is not only the weather, it's not only about outdoors, it's also about indoor. We spend 80% of our time indoor. And everybody knows that there is a global air quality issue, but probably the biggest health concern uh, with air quality is indoor, because our way of life, our lifestyle, includes all, all types of objects that do generate chemicals like glue, paints, carpets, and that eventually end up in, in having a, a poor indoor air quality. And the more we want to spare energy, the more we tend to confine our houses and the worse the indoor air quality gets. Another important point is to say that the, the weather, the, the globe is very vast, and especially in cities, uh, the, the current weather data which are available are not always accurate. I'll, I'll show you a, an example, because a city is a, a, a set of microclimates where the, based on the buildings, based on the traffic, the airflow, the air quality, and the weather is different. And so what we did is we've created a weather station. 
So it's made out of two modules, one to monitor your outdoor environment and one to monitor your indoor environment. Uh, we monitor the CO2, which is a good uh, indicator of the uh, air quality plus barometric pressure, temperature, humidity, uh, and also the sound, the amount of sound, the noise that you have in your place. And because we think it's important, we send those data to the cloud and we make them available on your iPhone. We have been honored with uh, three awards at the CES, who will take place in Las Vegas uh, next January. It's the first time a French company uh, has three awards uh, at, the same, uh, at the same event, and so we are very proud of this. Okay, let me show you why it's important. When, I, when uh, Loic invited me to the web, he said, hey, Fred, you have to show something which has not been shown before, so this is what I'll be uh, trying to do. I have a short demo. I hope it will be working. Okay, this is, uh, this is real time data. Uh, this is the Paris area. Paris is in the center, and you see the Meteo France weather station whose data are made public. So you see that they have basically uh, meteo stations, weather stations in uh, large airports, and that they currently said that the temperature, so a very simple figure is printed here, the temperature is six degrees. And if you go to the Meteo France website, you see that they confirm that they think that it's seven degrees in Paris. But we all know when we see this type of data that it's not six degrees in Paris. It's probably warmer because of the traffic and because of the city. So if we turn on the Netatmo weather station, we see a whole different picture. So I'm zooming in inside the Paris area. So what can we see? We see that it's not six degrees, it's not seven degrees. It's more like eight or nine degrees in the largest place of the city. It's even more 10 to 11 degrees uh, uh, near the Champs Elysees, where some of as will be tonight, 10 to 11 degrees. So we see that there is a three degree difference between the data which are reported by the, uh, the, um, the weather and the data which are actually measured. So what we do is basically concerning the, measure, the measurement of the environment, what we are doing is going from SD to HD because our customer are crowdsourcing those weather data and are making them available to the community. So that's what we're doing. We are building a network whose objective is to help the user to enhance his wellness and also to, for all of us to understand our environment. I'll be showing you another example, if I can switch this. That's a snapshot of our iPad app. What you see here is the barometric pressure. Maybe you know that when a storm is getting someplace, uh, the barometric pressure tends to lower and you can measure the size of the storm based on the, 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 low, the lower pressure which has, been, uh, which has been measured. And this was taken in New York on the 29th of Oct October in Southern Manhattan by one of our customers who has a station there. And you can see that the barometric pressure went as low. So you can see the storm getting in and out. Uh, this is the time on this graph, and this is the barometric pressure. So it was intense, and it was extreme because uh, the pressure went as low as 960 millibar, which is a class three storms. Some of our stations in New Jersey have reported uh, data uh, which are lower than what the North American Weather Association said this storm was. But, I mean, uh, we are not yet sure that those data are valid, but it's probable that in the future, with such a network of sensors, we will be capable of uh, measuring things which are not measured uh, by other means. I'm going to show you some other interesting figure. It's about indoor noise. Uh, everybody know indoor noise. Noise uh, inside your place is uh, pollution. 
the WHO, the World Health Organization, has shown that noise creates stress, lowers the quality of sleep. So basically, you don't like noise. And so those data are uh, an average of the amount of noise uh, that we made uh, in cities where we have enough station to make valid uh, average. And you can see that New York City, uh, so that's uh, the month of November 2012, so that's very recent. In New York City, you have 49 dB of average noise, which is basically also what the WHO has reported, that New York City is the most noisiest place in all America. And you can see that this figure goes down 45 dB in Madrid, which WHO say is the most noisiest place in, uh, in uh, Europe, and we confirm that, and as low as 39 dB in Hamburg. We think that one day, the price of real estate will partially rely on data that, has been, that have been crowdsourced, that have been acquired by search network of sensors. Another interesting figure is the average amount of CO2 uh, inside the house. So CO2 is not directly a pollutant. It's an indicator of the confinement. The more CO2 you have, the, the more confined is your place. So the more uh, adhesives and chemicals stay uh, in your room, and the lower is the air quality. So you can see that the highest the figure, the lower the air quality. You can see that in New York City, they have a much better indoor air than in Europe. Why? Because Americans tend to warm themselves with hot air, so they blow air, especially in large cities. As we in Europe, uh, more likely hot ourselves, uh, we warm ourselves with uh, hot water, so uh, we don't blow air, so the air, the inside air is not as much renew as it is in the United States, and we can see those figures. And so what, what, what we say to our customer is we have a very simple gesture for you, is when the confinement of, the, of your living place is exceeding a certain uh, amount, then you just get an alert on your iPhone, okay, saying, hey, your place is excessively confined, and you can vent it. So that's basically what we do. We, what we do is we crowdsource data. We crowdsource data to give them to the user because we think it, uh, it has value for the user to enhance his comfort at home or to plan his activities. And we bring those data to the world also uh, because we think they are useful to, to help us to understand our environment. Uh, we are going to do other devices. So uh, Netatmo is really committed to monitoring the, uh, the, uh, the environment and, and we are currently working on more sensors for indoor and uh, for outdoor. It's, it's, importantly co it's important collectively, once again, as I mentioned, because if you don't start by measuring things, then you can never enhance them. OK, that was it. Thank you for your attention at the end of the day. And